Hello and welcome to our OpenLCA tutorial. In the previous video we showed you how you can import free databases to OpenLCA and in this video we will explain the structure of databases and their elements. As you see in the navigation tab, AgriBelize database is already imported. We double click on the name to open and activate the database. The list of elements which constitutes the database appear. Starting with the last element of the list, the background data. In this section, we find all the possible flow properties to be used like mass, volume, length, etc. Under the unit groups, we find for example units of currency, units of volume, or units of mass which contains kilogram, gram, ton, and so on. Under actors, we can see the names of people who contributed to provide data and edit them. In the source section, we can find the literature which were referred to while obtaining the data. And finally, in the location we find the list of countries where the processes have been created. Moving up to indicators and parameters elements, the impact assessment methods and social indicators have to be downloaded. Global parameters can be created to be used later in processes. And the data quality systems are used to assess the quality of the entered data. Under the flows category, we can see a long list of flows which can be used in the pre-created or will be created processes. Shifting now to processes. Before we start, it's important to know first the definition of a process. Generally, a process is the production or modification of products and materials. But of course, there are different processes, such as market process, which we will explain in advanced levels. I'm going to click on processes, then choose a food recipe process to have an easy understanding. Selecting for example the process of almond cake at plant, which means the production of almond cake in situ. In the general information tab, we can add a name to the process and a description so that we know what the process is designated for. Every process has a universally unique identifier which is seen as a serial number. We can also add a date, a description to the time, a location where the products were manufactured, which technology was used, and a data quality system if you remember talking about it previously in the indicators and parameters elements. Next, we click down the page on Inputs and Outputs tab. Before we go deeper, it's crucial to know these definitions. An input flow is a quantified product, material or energy flow that enters a unit process. An output flow is a quantified product, material or energy flow that leaves a unit process. With our example, we can see that the input flows are the ingredients needed to bake an almond cake, such as unshelled almond, unsalted butter, eggs, flour, etc. And each has a specific amount and a defined unit. The expected results of this process is the production of the almond cake, which is found in the outputs list. In addition to that, we can see the emission of water, which left the process in form of evaporation. By a double click on any flow, a window opens giving more information about the flow. Its name, its description, its category which describes its pathway, and a universally unique identifier. By clicking on used in processes, we get a clear idea about the usage of this flow. If it shows consumed by, it means that the flow is used as an input in the mentioned processes. And if it shows produced by, it means it's an outflow in this process. In additional information, we can just give more explanation and information about the process. Clicking down the tab on flow properties, we can see its property as well as its unit. Some examples of properties are mass, area, volume, energy, and so on. 
We close the flow tab and move back to the process window. We go down the page and click on administrative information where you can just add more information about the process like the intended application, owner, generator, etc. In our next advanced videos, we will go through the rest of other tabs in deeper details. To have a whole overview of the lifecycle model of the product which is the almond cake, we can create a new product system by clicking on general information and selecting create a product system. A product system is a collection of unit processes with elementary and product flows, performing one or more defined functions and which models the life cycle of a product. We can keep the name as it is, tick auto link processes, prefer default providers under the provider linking, and unit process under the preferred process type, then we click on finish. In the general information you can always add and edit the name as well as the description. You can change the target amount in case you would like to compare this product with another product. We will explain this part in details in our next video. We go down the page and click on model graph. We can see every process that contributed to produce the almond cake. Every process appearing in this graph is a unit process. By definition, a unit process is the smallest element considered in the life cycle inventory analysis for which input and output data are quantified. To have an idea about the inputs and outputs of any of the unit processes, you just need to slide down the process or right click on it and select open in editor. Then you go to inputs and outputs tab. Our video came to an end. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video where I will show you how we create a whole life cycle assessment of a particular product.